Good evening, Southwest New Brunswick. I'm Lauren Nash, and here's what's making news in your region. Residents of Campobello and Eastport, Maine had a powerful start to their Tuesday. People on the island and around the bay felt an earthquake strong enough to rattle their windows. Natural Resources Canada's earthquake database shows the event was centered 27 kilometers southeast of St. Andrews, to the east of Deer Island. The 3.4 magnitude earthquake occurred at 7.56 a.m. and people across the county reported feeling the rumble. St. Stephen's Deputy Mayor Alan McEachran has confirmed his candidacy for mayor in the upcoming municipal elections in May. McEachran, who has served as the chair of the town's council's financial committee since his election in 2012, stated he's not ready to call it quits. So far, the deputy mayor will be campaigning against St. Stephen Councillor Abby Pond, who announced her intention to run for the mayor's chair last week. Pond was elected to council after a by-election was held in 2013 to replace the then deputy mayor John Ames, who resigned after winning a seat as Charlotte Campobello's provincial MLA. McAdam Mayor Frank Carroll also announced he will re-offer to serve another term this May last week. He has been mayor of the village for 35 years. CHCO Television participated in the CRTC local television hearings in Ottawa last week to make a case for funding independent community television. The CRTC chairman asked Rogers directly how they felt about the communities being in control of their community channels. They believe quite firmly that if the uh, public element of the broadcasting system is owned and operated by the public sector and that the uh, private element of the broadcasting system is owned and operated by uh, the private sector that the uh, community element of the broadcasting system ought to be owned and operated by the community. And I understand that and, and you know it's, it's uh, and, and, we, and we, totally, we totally agree with that um, and we understand that by the way the money that's derived from our cable revenues is not Rogers' money. We just believe that our 45-year history has demonstrated that we've done an excellent job of managing that. And so to move away from that model uh, and onto something else, worth the healthy debate. But at the end of the day, we need to decide what actually gets delivered to the people, what is actually working, what is actually, what, what is actually being produced uh, that people find uh, resonates with them and they want to watch in a very career-limiting move may disagree with my boss who just said we agree with the community should own the community uh, part uh, with with respect uh, the public I don't know how you would manage that uh, if if it were owned by 8,000 9,000 35,000 community associations the hearings will be wrapping up this week the CRTC is still looking for public input you can find the link on our Charlotte County Television Facebook page to make your comments known. The Town of St. Stephen intends to hold a public meeting about the demolition of the old Town Hall building. The public meeting will allow the Town's engineers to explain the results of an assessment they did of the building. This assessment resulted in Council instructing its Chief Administrative Officer to seek quotations for the demolition of the National Historic Site. The meeting will take place at Garcelin Civic Center Wednesday, February 3rd at 6 p.m. When you look at the mild weather across the region this past week, it's easy to believe the prediction of Shubenacadie Sam this Groundhog Day. The rodent predicted an early spring. This was certainly not the case 40 years ago. Groundhog Day in 1976 was one of the worst storms to hit New Brunswick. Hurricane force winds combined with very high tides caused major damage to the coastal regions. Those are all the news headlines I have for you this week. For these and other local and regional stories, pick up your copy of The Courier and Courier Weekend.